are you liking in this, this chilly weather? I am a fan of something. My wife is a fan of cold weather. I say if it's gonna be cold, it should snow. If it's not gonna snow, it should not be cold. Ski slope. And then, typically with a ski slope, you gotta spring. So in between, after he fell down into the, the hole, uh, the kitten showed him a way to get out, he climbed back up, and during that interim, uh, this hole filled up again. I know the hill doesn't quite look the same as it did before, so why don't we just... We'll assume that there's not enough for him to take off into the air. This was 50 meters, if I recall. Yep. His mass was 70 kilograms, or I didn't give him mass, did yeah, I? Give him mass. All right. He needs mass this time. <clears throat> uh, I assume on Earth one. Last time it was on Earth two. It was okay. Be on Earth two. All right. So the question is, how much will the spring compress? We do need to want know another piece of information about this. That springs have what are known as a spring constant. In other words, how much effort does it take in order to take it off of equilibrium? So if you take a slinky and just sit it on the table, sit it on a frictionless table preferably, it's going to have some natural length to it. Or if you take a slinky and you let it just dangle, it has a natural length to it. And the question is, how much do I need, how much effort does it take in order to stretch it? Well, the farther I stretch it, the more effort it takes. So there is, so the spring constant sort of a stiffness constant, gives an information about how much force it takes to stretch it a meter. And it takes twice as much as, much as that to stretch it two meters, three times as much to stretch it three meters, and so forth. The symbol for it, because we've run out of letters, it's a lowercase k. And why don't we let it, in this case, be 20 newtons per meter. So if I want to stretch the spring one meter, how much force will it take? So that's the spring force. It's the spring constant. Twenty newtons. If I want to stretch the spring forty meters, how much will it take? Two hundred. I'm oh, sorry. I meant to say two meters. Forty. If I want to compress it one meter, how much effort will it take? I mean, two more newtons. Still twenty meters. All right. So. Stretch it or compress it for an ideal spring. Spring ideal spring is not going to interfere with itself. If you've ever dealt with, I'm assuming everyone's played with a slinky. Yeah. I'm going to pretend if you haven't, go off and buy yourself a slinky and play with it. But you know, with a slinky, it, there's only so far you can compress it. In an ideal spring, it can compress as far as you need to. All right. Now, the force that the spring exerts is a conservative force. Therefore, that conservative force, the giant label with an S, it's, it's an elastic force, but I reserve the lowercase e for electric for next semester. <clears throat> the spring force is equal to negative K delta X. Now you can set X is equal to zero wherever you want. Let me just sort of throw this out there. Save yourself a lot of time and agony. Set x is equal to zero where equilibrium exists. The end of the spring when it's in equilibrium. The negative there says that if I press on a spring, so I compress it, I'm applying, uh, the displacement is this way, but the spring is exerting a, exerting a force that way, trying to get back to equilibrium. If I stretch the spring, then the displacement is this way, and the spring is trying to pull itself back towards equilibrium. So the force is always, uh, the force that the spring exerts, or the ideal elastic material, is the opposite direction of the displacement. 
because it always wants to get back to equilibrium. <clears throat> it is a conservative force as mentioned before, and I will just jump to the chase of the potential energy associated with that, one half K delta X squared. This, it looks similar to the kinetic energy formula. It is just coincidence in nature. And partial spoiler alert, if you get into some beginning hardcore quantum physics, this shows up again. All right. We will begin the same way we've always begun. Uh, if you think about the forces acting on this person during the trip, you've got gravitational force, normal force, and a spring force. The spring force and the gravitational force are conservative. The normal force is always perpendicular to the motion, so it does no work at all. In other words, energy is conserved. What is the, is there like a name for that equation that you sub S equals one half K delta X? This is the ideal elastic potential energy formula. All right. You, of course, for potential energy. All right. So I know that the non conservative work is equal to the change in energy. And usually at some point I just skip this step. Zero is equal to P final minus E initial. P initial equals E final. Once you've established energy is conserved, you can just jump straight to this. But I just want to reemphasize one of the work energy relationships. <clears throat> First in the flames, we throw another one in there, but it's not. I'm about to ask the question, which all of you should know by heart. Here we go. In unison, really cool. What's the formula for kinetic energy? One half mv squared. That was better than usual at this point. Thank you. What's the formula for potential energy? Which one? The one associated with our two conservative forces. The, what is the potential energy formula associated with the weight? G, big G, M1 plus M2 over M2. No. I made my own physics. Okay. That's right. <laughs> it's the one we dealt with last time. That's the one. So I got, well, I told you to put in the intermittent and intermediate step. Uh, UG plus UX. So I got one half MV initial squared plus MGH initial. All right. And what about the potential energy formula associated with a spring, an ideal spring? Uh, the U sub S equals one half K <coughs> delta X squared. And that's equal to, and I did not give myself enough room. One half MV final squared plus MGH final plus one half K delta X final squared. Ooh. So it's the same thing just with finals instead? That factor symbol should not have been there. Sorry, what was your question? It's the same thing with just um, with G 
just okay. finals instead on the equal sign? Is that the initial? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we were making the claim that the energy is conserved. In other words, however much energy we start with is how much we end with. Unlike before, we can't get rid of mass. This might be map that some students try to push. Um, for the one half k delta x squared, I don't know. I still thought we could cancel it out, but it's initial final. Yeah, yeah. However, there are some of these things that are equal to zero. So the next step is what's equal to zero. What can we get rid of before we do anything else? Same situation as the last time. He starts at the very top of the, the cliff, and that lands on his back, which is enough to get him going. Initial, his initial velocity is zero. Speed. Or speed, sorry. Well, the initial velocity is zero, but the speed is yeah. as well. Yep, because the initial speed is zero. Springs in equilibrium at the very beginning? Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Springs not compressed or anything else, so that's zero. Because initially, it's not compressed or stretched. We have one, maybe two more. Question again is how far will this will the spring compress? All right, so let's go through and uh, mass is given. Given. What's the initial height? 15 meters. What's the bottom height? Zero. Why? If we're going all the way down the hill, it leads to some that stuff to zero. Yeah, but why is it he's stopping at zero? Because we said so. Yes. Okay. I love how that worked in this class. <laughs> Alright, we got one more. That was the one that we could have made zero or not. Um, general rule of thumb. I always like the final being zero, but that's just my own childhood scars. <clears throat> it's preferable to get rid of one of those by setting something equal to zero. All right, and we got one more zero here. Well, you just told me the initial height's not zero. What about the final compression? Is delta x at the end final? I think that's also going to be zero. So it's in equilibrium again when it's compressed as far as it'll go? Uh, hmm. yeah, delta x is how much it's either been compressed or stretched from its just normal hanging state. Yeah, I think I think you, you can press it all the way. You're gonna get to a point where you can press it no further. Okay. And at that point, maximum compress, if you will. Um, 
if one looks like we have one. It, it won't be on um, it'll, it'll it'll be a fluid free. So if I take a slinky and have it dangling and I pull down on it, there's gonna be a certain point when when I let go it's not going to spring back up. No 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 that doesn't work. But it doesn't work too. I see your point. <laughs> At maximum compression, how fast is it going? Zero. Yeah. So when we are going all the way and we hit the maximum spring, we're just stopping there. We're not coming back or anything. Oh, we will. We will shoot back, but we don't care about the shooting back. We do that at this point. We just care about how far does it go. Uh, uh, At maximum compression, you have to stop in order to turn around. So it was V final equals zero maximum compression. <laughs> so, in essence, we start out with the, is a hand gesture going. We have all this potential energy and we have no kinetic. As he goes down the hill, there's this exchange back and forth between the kinetic and potential. It's been upon, you know, goes down the hill, goes up a hill, down the hill. And eventually he has all, all this kinetic and no potential. Then he hits the spring and that kinetic just starts getting converted back into potential again. So he has kinetic, maximum kinetic here, but the kinetic energy all goes away as the spring compresses, as it gets converted back into potential. So our problem has now been reduced to gravitational potential initially is equal to elastic potential finally. And solve for delta x. If someone would be so kind. <laughs> Off to the races. And this is X, uh, the delta X? Delta X. It's how far it's gotten pushed. Yeah. Now all of this energy is potential, the potential to do work, and it will then start to go back towards equilibrium, and it will push that skier. How far up the, the slope will the skier go? Guess it's fifty nine point one six meters. Uh, it will not go up that far. What? Hold on. What did we? What does that mean? What? What did we just find? How much that spring will compress? He, so he's coming down the hill, going however fast he's going. Hits the spring. The spring compresses, slowing him down. He stops, and that spring has compressed almost sixty meters to stop him. Okay. And now that spring. Coil launches back and shoots out. How far up the hill will we go? We need some information. Do you 
So all the information you need on the board. Oh, would we use the 20 newtons per meter to find the force that pushes on him? You could go about that. That's the long way. That Because that force is not constant. That force mm -hmm. is going to lessen the more he, the closer it gets to equilibrium. He has all of this potential energy, this elastic potential energy. It then starts converting into kinetic. And then gets converted into gravitational potential. It's a frictionless loop. The question is energy conserved. Can we use um, the equation where you add together kinetic and potential to give you the energy? Like basically this? Yeah. Yeah. You can. Bagel's basically a central question. Would he just go back to the start? Yes, he would. If he's going to go past the start, he has to have more energy to somehow pump it through the system. He has only enough, he starts out with all the energy from beginning at the top. That total energy stays the same. So it goes all the way down, it gets converted to kinetic, then into a different type of potential, and then it gets shot back out into kinetic and then into gravitational potential. Well, he's just enough gravitational potential to get 50 meters above where he started. Uh, He'll so go back to the stop. stop. So be, because energy is conserved, you can only go back however far you went? Yes. 